Meanwhile, Fox News contributor Leo Terrell says McAuliffe made a fatal error during the final stretch of the campaign. Listen. The race card is dead. At the last minute, out of desperation, McCullough tried to use the race card. This was about education. This was about parents' rights. And the race card is no longer applicable. And I would suggest to the Democrats, they need to go back to the drawing board, because as people like myself have left the Democratic Party, because when they don't have ideas, when they don't play with facts, they throw up the race card, and that is a surrender sign. Here to react, co-founder of Speak Georgia Incorporated and conservative commentator Janelle King. Janelle, good morning to you. Good morning. Thank you for having me. Oh, we're happy to have you. And, you know, Terry McAuliffe did make this uh, race a lot about race uh, when he was saying that Virginia needs fewer white teachers and accusing Glenn Youngkin of trying to ban a book by a black author. And it didn't work. No, of course it didn't work, you know, because it is, the race card is dead. And I totally agree. You know, my favorite economist, Thomas Sowell, says that, you know, um, that racism is on life support and is only kept alive by these race hustlers and race baiters. And I just believe that that is what's happening. Anytime you allow emotionalism to drive policy and politics, you are playing a dangerous game. And at the end of the day, no matter what the color of your skin is, we all want the same things. We want to make sure that we live in a, a safe environment, we're able to educate our children, that we're able to make money and live a good life. At the end of the day, that's what matters. And that's why Youngkin won, because he spoke to everyone and he gave a message that it was broad versus trying to single out or to eliminate um, certain groups of people based on whatever your ideology is or theory is. And so I, I am so happy with what, ha what, what has happened, and I look forward to seeing more. Yeah, and uh, this race, of course, had a lot to do with education and critical race theory. And I'm reminded of what Condoleezza Rice recently said on The View about critical race theory, where she says that she wants black children to be proud that they're black, but that doesn't mean that white kids need to feel bad about their race either. And with Glenn Youngkin winning in Virginia, per particularly because of critical race theory and education, do you think that this is the beginning of the end of critical race theory? You know what? I sure hope so. But you know what? We're going into 2024, and I don't put anything past the Democrats. I feel like they're going to revamp, and they're going to come back with a different angle, which is why we have to continue to elect strong um, conservatives that coming out of, as they come out of these primaries to go against the Democrats. You know, my husband is running for U.S. Senate here in Georgia, and I just know that when, when it comes down to making these decisions, you have to put strong candidates in front of the Democrats, and that is where we are right now. I sure hope that we are now going to move past this and begin to talk about policy policy and platforms, because that's how you win voters. Race hustling and, and trying to um, uh, cause people to, to silo into these groups is not how we're going to win going forward. Yeah. And you speaking of strong candidates, Winsome Sears uh, is ahead and could become Virginia's first female uh, black lieutenant governor. And she made a speech at around 1230, 1245 this morning. Um, and she was talking about how her father came from Jamaica and he came uh, over to the United States during the height of the civil rights movement. And he said he did that because America is the land of opportunity. And she became a Marine because she was willing to die for this country. And it was such a positive speech. So uh, you talked about how uh, Glenn Youngkin's uh, camp's message was uh, light and how Terry McAuliffe, his messaging was sort of dark. And I think that that's a, another really good example of that. Absolutely, absolutely. We have to focus on the positives of things. And that's where you that's where policy comes into play. I always say that Republicans win when we can talk about policy, when we can talk about our platform, because our policies are sustainable. We are, are they're based in, in the, uh, the Constitution. And at the end of the day, that's what stands. The Constitution is just not a piece, random piece of paper. It is what protects us and protects our rights. And that is something that everyone can get behind as long as you are an American. So I am super excited about it. I'm also also super excited about the fact that the Atlanta Braves won the World Series <laughs> as I'm here in Georgia. Yeah, I, there's so you know what honestly the the World Series could have been like a, our lead story today if not for <laughs> obviously a more important story in the Virginia <laughs> election. Uh, right. I want to draw your attention to a tweet by Congresswoman Cory Bush. Uh, she posted this about Joe Manchin saying Joe Manchin's opposition to the Build Back Better Act is anti-black, anti-child anti-woman and anti-immigrant. And there has been a lot of, of talk about how the Virginia race uh, could really affect the uh, President Biden's social spending plan. Uh, so these two topics really are linked. And what do you think about Cori Bush bringing race into it? 
you know, I'm not surprised. I wish I was, but I'm not. And I, and, and you know, the rhetoric does not meet the reality. And that is something that we see here in Georgia. And that is what we're seeing all across the United States of America. And so what they're using in order to create these narratives is just false. But I'll tell you what's anti-Black is a community. It's, it's putting, taking a community and making them solely purpose for votes only and no, nothing else. Pro making all these random promises and never living up to anything. Promises that are not going to be beneficial for the community anyway. That's what's yeah. anti-Black. At the end of the day, they are anti-American, and that is where we need to get back to. We need to get back to our, our American policies and policies that have allowed us to be a leading in the world this far. Janelle King, thank you so much for waking up with us this morning. We so appreciate it.